Log likelihood is a pretty critical idea when dealing with classifiers or decoding algorithms, a lot of statistical inference and machine learning techniques. Because it turns out that these probabilities that, we can, that we're dealing with can be exceedingly small. Let's go back to our naive base classifier and the likelihood, right? So the likelihood was often based on this, right? The probability of B given A. Well, let's write out the full thing just so that we can make sense out of it. Probability of A, some event A, conditioned on B, right? The probability that this piece of email we got is spam given the evidence, which are the words in that email, is the probability of seeing that particular set of words, that evidence, conditioned on the fact that it is spam times the probability of A, the prior divided by the evidence seen, probability of B. In our naive Bayes classifier, right, we said we can just cross this out because it's gonna be true no matter, for all the different conditions of A, it just cancels out. This is just some value, right? We can know what it is, it's relatively, it's some number that is only multiplied once, so we don't have to worry about it, we can always factor it out. But this term, right, this is our likelihood. likelihood. Our likelihood, right, we said has to be the independent multiple of all the different words, right? So that means we're going to, if this is the corpus of all the words in spam versus not spam, uh, sorry, of all the different words that we're, that we're looking at in that email, then that's going to be the probability that we get, you know, word one, let's say B1 is the first word in the email knowing that it's spam times the probability that the second word is spam. Uh, sorry, sorry, the probability of seeing the second word conditioned that it's spam times the probability of B3 conditioned on the fact that it's spam, right? This B is, since we're treating each word independently, is just the multiples of all the different conditional probabilities. The problem is, right, all the way until we get to B of N, the last word, times its conditional probability, assuming that it's spam. The problem with this is that this is going to quickly become numerically intractable. Each of these numbers is very small, right? The probability of any single one of these words occurring is relatively small for most words, except for some certain very big buzzwords. But, you know, many of these words, the probabilities are going to be relatively small. And if you multiply very, very small numbers together, and there's hundreds and hundreds of words here, which there often are, right? Email can be hundreds, thousands of words. Then you're going to end up multiplying such small numbers together that the only result you're going to get is zero. You have exceeded the resolution of flo double precision floating point, and you don't have any more resolution. You're, you're gone, right? It's just it's rounding it off to zero because the system, the, mat, the computer cannot do any better. So you never want to do this. You never simply want to multiply all the conditional probabilities for your likelihood. It's not numerically tractable. It's actually unstable. You'll always just kind of converge to zero. So instead of ever calculating the likelihood, instead what we do is we calculate the log likelihood. And the log likelihood is useful because it helps us get around this numerically intractable aspect. And the reason it's the reason it works is because at the end of the day, when we're looking at the naive base classifier, we're simply looking for the largest probability. Right, whichever of these has the largest probability, that's what we're gonna take. We don't really truly care what the underlying accurate probability is. I mean, we could in theory calculate it, but it ain't that big of a deal. We just wanna find out the biggest one. And because the log function, right, any log function, even natural log, right, all the same. Because the log function, a monotonically increasing function, it's gonna preserve the relationship of of which number is bigger. So if you take the log of two numbers and one is bigger than the other, so if you have two numbers, right? If you have, if you have X and Y, they're just two numbers, and one is bigger than the other. If you take the log of those two numbers, log of X is still, and if this happens to be true, right? Let's just say that X is greater than Y, then the log of X is still gonna be greater than the log of Y. That's really nice. 
The reason is now we can exploit this. We can exploit this property by then taking the log of this multiple, of this set of multiple probabilities. And because it's a log, when you multiply elements inside of a log, it's the, taking the log and adding them up. This is equal to the log of the probability of B of one conditioned on A plus the log of the probability of the second one conditioned on A plus the log of the third one probability of B3 conditioned on A plus dot 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 plus the log of the probability of N uh, oops probability of getting evidence word N conditioned on A and this because it's now the log and the sum we're summing all these numbers this is now numerically tractable this is stable this is not going to surpass our our floating point resolution. This is a hack, right? A trick that we play to get our numbers tractable. So now what we're doing is adding a whole bunch of these log probabilities. This is the log likelihood. Because this actual multiplier is intractable, we cannot do it. We can instead take the sum of the logs and get the same value. And because at the end of the day, this is true, that if this is, if we're treating this as X and we're treating Y as, and you know, let's treat this as X probability of B conditioned on A as X, and we're gonna treat Y as the probability of B conditioned on not A. In this case, right, it's the probability of seeing this evidence conditioned on its spam, and the probability of B conditioned on its not spam, right, seeing this evidence and not spam. If these are true, right, if this is what X and Y are, and there's a relationship between the two, then the log of that relationship is still gonna hold true, and that's what we're doing here. We're taking the log, because it's a numerical trick that we can play, so that the numbers of our, of our probabilities become mathematically tractable. We're no longer truly calculating the actual probability. We're calculating the log probability. And then if we truly care to find the actual probability, well, then you can take the inverse log and see what that is, assuming that it's numerically tractable. It may not be. These are still gonna be pretty small numbers. And sometimes taking that inverse log isn't tractable, but in some cases it is. The key is that it doesn't matter. The reason it doesn't matter is because the relationship of which is going to be the largest one is still going to be true. And thus we can perform our classification on the log likelihood is that instead of the actual likelihood. So many times you will see this as the log probability times the prior. And that is almost always the way it's done when you have a large dimensional space. When the feature space is large, you gotta go to log likelihood. Generally, when it's above like five or 10 is usually immediately needs to be run towards a lot of likelihood. I would do it in general for any case, simply because that's the safe way to go about implementing this. You never need to worry about numerical stability when you're dealing with log likelihood. Well, not never, but in general, you're much, much safer, specifically because you're adding values as opposed to multiplying. And, in, and for the vast majority of cases, you will be numerically stable and it won't just go to zero.